So, Baruch Hashem, we started learning a little bit from the Bible, from Bereshit. And we saw that Hashem said, Yehi Or, that there are going to be light. Vayehi Or, and light came. Vayar Elohim et Or Kitov. And then Hashem, the Creator, He saw that the light was a good creation. He was happy. He was satisfied with that creation. Vayavdel Elohim ben Or ben Choshech. And Hashem separated, made a difference between light to darkness. And then the Creator called the light day, and the darkness He called it night. So, in the beginning the Creator created the light as, as a form he made the light with no connection to the sun. The sun, the stars, the moon, the those things are still not functioning. They're not taking place in the creation yet. The ideas of having light, the ideas of having darkness came in the holy mind of the Creator and He said that they're going to be and they became and then they just took place in the creation. The light is not depend in the sun. Not because that the Creator created the sun, so we have light. When we're going to read a little bit more, we're going to realize that we're going to see by the order of the creation. First of all, the Creator made the light to be. And then, he hanged it to be depend in the sun. But the beginning of creation, we must remind ourselves, is not a natural cause of nature. It's not because of the way the Creator created the world, so they're going to be light, they're going to be summer, they're going to be winter. We're going to see it in the future. Here it's written that only after Cain and Hevel's war and, and, and fight that in the end Cain killed Hevel, only after that seasons start coming to the world. There was summer and then there came winter. The things that we see in reality today, oh it's cold because of this, it's cold because of that, it's hot because of the, it's light now because it's the daytime. All those things are creations of Hashem. That's how the Creator decided to create His world. But the Creator is not obligated to rules of nature. Therefore, we are also not obligated to rules of nature when we're following the Creator with our faith. When you follow the Creator in your mind under the rules of nature, and you don't understand that the Creator is above physicality, that He is above the place, that He is beyond all limitations and constrictions of this world, and He is the Creator, the inventor of this world, before you realize that, so you have rules, and you have obligations, and you have systems, and, 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 and you're stuck, you're stuck in the physical world. Oh, it's day, so I must go, I need to work, and whatever. But when you're connecting yourself to the divine will of heaven, and you realize who your Creator really is, so then you understand that like that He is above nature, you're also, even though you trap in physicality, you, in your potential, is godly and holy and able to bring down wonders and miracles to this world. And the world cannot stop you from achieving the real achievements that are treasured inside your, your spirit. And then after he made the light and then the darkness, he called the, the darkness the day, um, the light day, and the darkness he called night. So that's the first day. And Hashem said on that day, the Creator said on that day, that it was a good, a good day. 
successful day, a meaningful day, productive day. Vayomer Elohim yeir akia betoch hamayim, and then the Creator made the sky inside the water. Vayim avdil ben mayim lamayim, and separated one water from second water. Now, where are those waters? One, we know from this world, this is the water that we can see in the springs, in the sea, in the wells, in the lakes. And where are the higher water, which are the other part of water? So those are spiritual water. And also the to those ones who think that the higher water is the rain, it's the water that are in the clouds, so for sure that's not the truth because with no doubt they are not separated from the water that we, the physical water that we can see here. The real, um, because like it's a circle, the circle of nature that the water getting hotter and then they're rising and become clouds and then when there is enough amount of water in the clouds so then they're falling back on earth so it's the same water there is no real separation between them they're always in the move it's one water of our world the higher water that we're talking about are divine water are the water that are in heaven and it brings us to that understanding that the physical world that we're experiencing is only a mirror to reflect to us the real um, will of heaven, the real nature, the spiritual nature of our creation. For that to understand, we need to explain a little bit more about the nature of water and to understand that those water are only compared to our souls, to our spirit, our spirits. Now, the Zara Kadosh, the book of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, is explaining to us that the water that been separated from the divine water are feminine water and they're being called crying water, Maim Bukhin. And those are our souls. That our souls has been separated from heaven and been sent into physicality. And now today they're trapped inside bodies, but they are spirits. They're not physicals. They're not connected here. They're just being held as prisoners inside the body. And when the Creator is calling those spirits back, so immediately, in no time, they're rising back to heaven to reunite with their source, with the male side of their soul, of their water. And this is the Sea of Souls. This is the Sea of Souls, Yama Neshamot, that it's actually eternity that is above us, that is beyond our reach. Because we are trapped here in this world, and that's why our souls are crying all the time. This is why we lack of things all the time, because we miss our source. We miss the main part of our soul that is separated from our awareness in a way, blocked by physicality that is covering and shading on our true being that who we really are is a soul, is one soul. We're all godly. That's the real truth about our existence, about our creation. But the Creator separated our ability. He divided our awareness. He created the sky, the sky to separate us in our mind from who we really are. And our mission in life is to penetrate 
those screens and to recognize the true nature of our spirits and not to let the physical world mislead us and confuse us and, and distract our minds from the real purpose of our being. So this rakia, the sky, is a block, is, is a separation. And even though you look at the sky and the air seems clear to you, the real truth about nature is that even the thinnest layer of it, the clearest one, like water, like glass, like air, are still blocking our ability to see what that is beyond. For an example, when the day comes and the sun is rising and there is light and now you can see, so you feel thankful for the light because it gives you the ability to see. But at night, when the sun set, suddenly you can see the stars. Now also during the day, the stars are above your head same stars as at night. Why can't you see them in the day? Because the light is blinding you from being able to see the stars. The light that gives you the ability to see to short distance is blocking your ability to visualize, to see for long distance the stars. And at night, the real truth is that also the stars and the dark sky that you can see now at night when you don't have light is also blocking you from seeing the world that beyond the stars, that beyond the physical skies. You cannot see heaven. You cannot see eternity. You cannot see what really still blocked and hidden behind the curtain of the sky. So even if the layers are very, very thin and clear, and pure, they're still blocking your ability to see the truth. Now that's the real nature of this world, that it is always blocking your eyesight, always trying to remove you from the real purpose of who you are. That's why you cannot, we cannot connect ourselves completely to heaven, to the Creator, to our true nature, through using, by using the world. Even the stars, even the moon, even the sun, even, even things that are written in the Torah, as long as it's physical, there is an aspect of physicality in it, it's blocking. The only way to complete your attachment to who you really are is an inner work, is only by focusing deep in your own mind, trying to realize who am I? What am I doing in this messed up world? And trying to figure out the real will of heaven, the real voice that is rising from within, from inside. That's the only possible way to connect yourself completely to the Creator. So Hashem, He made the sky. And He separated the divine water from the feminine water, Vayichen, and it took place, and it happened. Vaykra Elohim Larakia Shamaim, and the Creator called the sky, sky. There is a difference between the word Rakia to the word Shamaim. Rakia, it's that separation, it's like a strong layer. That word holds inside of it a certain character, a certain essence, like separation, like a wall, like, um, um, like a certain surface that he created to separate between the divine water to the lower water. And those are the sky. Now what's the sky? So there is a very deep learning about the word Shamaim, Shamaim, that they reflect that the water are over there. Shamaim is saying Shamaim. The sky are telling us that over there, there is water. How can we know that there is water over there? Because the sky is blue. When you look at the sky, you see it's blue. So now, why is it blue? Blue is the color of water, at least 
that's how our mind works to recognize blue as a water source so the sky are showing to us that there is water over there and then the evening came and the morning came and it became Monday, the second day, Yom Sheni, the second day. In Hebrew, we don't call the days in names. Even if we're saying Yom Rishon, Yom Sheni, we are counting the days. We're saying the first day. In English, you have names to the days. You have Sunday, Monday, whatever. Nonsense day. But in Hebrew, you say first day, second day, third day. And it's very very meaningful because really the days are, are teaching us what happened in the first day, what happened in the second day. And things that took place in the first day of creation has a certain power and effect also every Sunday, also every first day. Things that took place on the second day are still affecting and being very meaningful every second day of of the week and uh, and of course that Sunday is not part of weekend you understand what I'm saying I hope Sunday is the beginning of the new week Shabbat is the end of the week there is only Shabbat that ends the week and then Sunday is the beginning of the new week it's not a weekend Sunday is not a weekend it's the beginning of the week. If for you it's the weekend, so you're late. <laughs> you were one day late. So you see, in the second day, Hashem didn't say that Vayar Elokim Kitov. He didn't recognize that day as a good day. He didn't say, oh, that's a good day. Why? Because he haven't completed the creation of the second day. And only in the third day the Creator completed the creation of that day and then he said second time twice he said it's good that's why we're saying that Tuesday is a is a is a better day Tuesday is the best day of the week Tuesday is a day that holds twice the word Kitov it is good something good happens in that day, in the third day, twice. The completion of the second day and the completion of the third day. Thank you very much. May Hashem bless you and us always. Amen.